Hey, chick chicks. And Lyle. All right, so, well, good morning. We made it through. Boy, the mosquitoes are out today. Wow. We made it through the uh, hurricane remnants. We got a little over four inches here. Uh, my my driveway handled it well. It it actually ended up. You can't really see much. The uh, there's a culvert two feet down, and the culvert got full so full of water, it was just running over the top, over the driveway. But anyway, that's where that's at. So today, <clears throat> today I am going to go down into town probably put my drone up and take a look at the flooding because it is really flooded down there. A lot of the roads are closed. Um, we'll get that in a little bit. I wanted to go inside. Inside. I want to go inside and talk about the plum. Boy, the mosquito. I want to get in and out of the mosquitoes. The, uh, the plumbing, uh, there's been so many questions about that as well as the electrical. So I just want to do like a quick shop talk on why I did what I did. So Let's go inside. You ready, Kaya? Yeah. First of all, sorry I don't have the deadbolt in. I know that bothers uh, one of you folks that is a locksmith, I think. I have to take this off and the hinges, I have to take the door off and paint it so that it matches the roofing. That should be really slick looking. Also, the electric box. Uh, I've talked about it some, but I wanted to just point it out. I, I'm keeping the envelope of the building as tight as I can without any uh, open, as few openings as possible through the wall. And so this box, if I set it in, it's almost four inches deep. It would mean this is going to, would be right against the outside wall, which would cause a condensation problem to do that and it would rust this out really quickly. So that's why I did this, and then I'm going to <clears throat> frame it in. I'll make a little door so that none of this will be seen. Be all uh, in, inside, out of sight. <clears throat> the other thing, let's spin around and look at the uh, plumbing. And the plumbing. I do appreciate your comments and thoughts. Um, there was some question about having the hot and cold on the right side. But this is not where the sink is going to be. It's going to be over here. So I had to, I had to transition from the shower and, as well as going out to, to the water supply as well as getting over to the sink. So at some point, these wires have to cross each other. But I pre-drilled these holes. Uh, let's see if they fit for half inch pipe. Okay. <laughs> A little tap tap. Okay, there's that. I couldn't do this one all in one piece because the head of this fit 90 uh, elbow is bigger than where this hole will be. So I had to whittle and chisel and <laughs> chop and channel. So let's see, we're down. Looks like I've got to take just a little bit more here so that this gap will disappear. But uh, so what I wanted to talk about was a uh, some folks mentioned the sizing of drains, and uh, the, some people thought a two-inch drain out of a sink would be uh, the correct way to go. So I did look it up, and uh, code here, it's inch and a half PVC to a sink. And what, uh, the shower is two-inch, which is code. And so this inch and a half goes down into a T, I think I showed it on another video, into the two inch so that the flow, so they're all, this, these are the only two water drain uh, setups in the building. So I have the half inch PEX 
which is all teed in and tied in and uh, goes down outside. So these two, the hot and cold, when they come in, this one will extend over to the hot side of the sink, which is going to be over here, and the cold will be on this side. And the drain will come over here to a P-trap and so on to finish that off. So looking at why I feel comfortable with this, this, this is the sink faucet. So it's going to be over here. So if I was to turn it on full, full bore, first of all, the, I guess the floor would get wet because I don't have a sink in here yet. But if I, if I did, the flow rate is 2.2 gallons per minute wide open at 60 PSI. So uh, this sink, it's a single bowl. It's a small one because it's in a tiny house. Um, so we're looking at 2.2 gallons, or if the sink was full, I think it might hold three gallons, possibly. The, the flow rate of an inch and a half pipe for drain is uh, about 17 gallons per minute. So we're looking at 2.2 or, or at the most three, trying to drain it uh, quickly. This would easily handle that flow without any problem. The, the shower, uh, the flow rate for the shower head is about 2.7 gallons per minute full speed. Full, full power at 60 PSI. The drain is rated, with a two inch drain, is rated at 30 gallons per minute draining. So easily, if you added these two at 2.2, the shower head at 2.7, we're only at, what's that, 4.9 gallons per minute flowing in and easily letting out 30 gallons per minute. So we're, we're well within the limits. I just wanted to, to uh, explain that without belaboring it. Uh, so that's where we're at. Now I'm going to, uh, I guess, I guess, I didn't realize I didn't quite have it good. So I'll just tr take a pencil mark, scribe that. On the back side, this curves in so it it impinges on that. I've got to back cut a little bit more, probably both sides. So I'll go do that, go do that and I'll be right back. And I'm using that floor pad. Love it. Ah, so I've been cutting and whittling. <laughs> Ooh. Get through this part. And th this is the, uh, the hardest part, I think, of all the plumbing. Time and patience, as my dad would say. <laughs> okay. And there we go. Okay, that looks good. Put this here. Great. Okay, that's perfect. So, there's one other important thing I want to talk about. I'm going to put one more on because that'll help tie all this together. Perfect, 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 perfect. Okay. So the other thing is, a lot of people have talked about a drain, uh, I mean a vent in the drainage. And so I just wanted to address that. You know what, I have it outside. I'll be right back. Hold on. <laughs> this is what's going up under the sink for a vent. For the for the shower and sink, it will the uh, 
pipe will come out and this will, there'll be a T. It'll come up to this and this will be, it screws in. It's an AAV designated vent. So, um, uh, drainage vent, I'm sorry. It stands for air, uh, air admission valve. Uh, it's designed to go here so that you'll be able to hear this. The spring-loaded valve that went, if there's suction going into the drain, that valve will open up and allow air to go in so it doesn't back up. I first learned about these like 35 years ago and they've worked great. I've, I think I've built probably 65 houses in my lifetime. Um, and just just a few of them, I did use some of these, especially if it was a long distance from the main stack, we'd say. Uh, rather than, uh, I'm just not one to punch holes through a roof, uh, needlessly. So that will eliminate the need for a hole for a vent uh, outside of the envelope, because I want to, again, and I've mentioned it, I, I want to keep the building really tight so it heats easily. So that's where it goes. That's what I'll be doing. Okay, I guess we ought to take this, I'm going to take it up uh, a ways, the tongue and groove, both sides, and then um, we'll go on to the next step. I took a, another, just a flat, clamp, flat uh, band and secured this from the back so that this is fixed it won't won't uh, move in or out Looks like carving and whittling time. All right. Okay, that outlet's gonna fit right inside of this one, one board. <clears throat> and there's that. It took a little while to whittle that puppy. That puppy, it's not a puppy. Did it. I think I'll have a little like shelf unit on this side of the plumbing. I'll put um, something solid to nail to for this side and that will complete that. All right, so I cut a piece to go in here. I made a mark so I know right where it goes. Perfect. All right, so now I can close this up and we're golden. But for, for now, I'm going to head into town. If you folks don't want to see footage of the, the flooding, I understand. You can just kind of like fast forward. But it's kind of interesting to me because I'm, I'm hearing a lot of the roads are washed out. I want to see how far I can get and uh, get some video. Well, we made it down to the uh, water in Lindenville, and you can see the flooding. I'm just taking off here, getting ready to uh, just take a peek around. That's the Pesumpsic River. That plaza is White Market Plaza with Hoagie's Pizza and Subs right, right in front there. The hotel on the other side, there's a furniture business in the, that large two or three story building. Down in the very lower left corner is a little little house, totally flooded. A good friend of mine used to live there. They sold it a number of years ago. 
that was always a concern of his when uh, floods would come. Right there used to be a boat launch. <laughs> it's probably uh, six or seven feet underwater right now, right there. Over on the left is a scale shack where I weighed my tiny house. They're not flooded. So this, uh, I've canoed up and down this river a lot and it's totally run over its banks at this point. That road on the left is the back center road of Lindenville, currently closed on uh, one end is flooded. That line of water you can see on the right is the railroad tracks. That's Agway right there. Right at the intersection there going right is closed to the through traffic. Over on the right, the far right, you can see the telephone poles. To the left of the poles is Route 5. It's the main road through Lindenville. Currently not available. You can see Kinney Drug there. Uh, it's hard to see it, but there's a car buried under the water right there uh, in front of Kinney's, Kinney Drug and then the car dealership. Uh, a lot of their cars are underneath. Beyond Kinney Drug is um, Community Bank. That's where I would do my drive-up banking. <laughs> but not today, I guess. Lindenville Hardware, they're closed, they're flooded. All of those stores, restaurants. That's a sewage treatment center. Currently out of operation, I would say. I don't know how they handle effluent from flooding. I don't know what happens to that. That's typically rich farmland right there. This is headed south along the railroad tracks. You can see the elevation of the tracks begins to rise, so it's dried out. This is another view from uh, Linen Center side. It's the town offices on the right. Bandstand Park on the right, and then we're moving over to uh, Powers Park in the center there. Pretty sure they're closed. This road goes over from Lindenville to Linden Center. This area on the left. Oh, I guess I didn't show it. It comes up in a minute. I'll show it to you in a minute. This this is uh, the meadow out back. My brothers and I, we used to go down here during the spring when it was flooded. We'd make rafts and we'd just float around and play. A long time ago. <laughs> so the village over street ahead is is Lennonville. All the water runs off from those mountains down into the lowlands and that's why it floods so so badly here at times. See the covered bridge to the far left, and right where the rail, the uh, telephone lines come out, there used to be, when I was back in the 1960s, a house right there, and the road would divert each side of it. 
going uh, out towards Sheffield Wheelock or towards East Burke. I don't think I've seen it this high since maybe the 1970s. So this is just a quick quick shot of uh, the flooding here. Sorry I didn't get back to the tiny house. Uh, we will, I will, the next, next episode. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it.